Hello everyone and welcome back to Untamed Chaos. So at the start of this week I mentioned how next week or next episode or next Monday's episode, it's a bit of a tongue twister trying to say this, but I mentioned how I'm going to be updating the mod pack then. So one of the things I have been wanting to do with the mod pack update is fight the Ender Dragon because I've been or in the update, I have reworked it to be a lot more interesting of a fight. Hopefully one that's going to be good to record as well as play. And not just something too hard or too boring to watch. But I don't know. I think it's turned out really well. But uh, before I do that, there's a few preparations I want to do. Because after finishing, or after I finished designing the fight, I realized I'm not ready to fight him. I need to get a few more things first. So that's why I want to focus this episode around. Preparing for the Ender Dragon fight. Which, you know, in vanilla would not need much preparation, but for how I buffed it, it needs preparation. And not all the stuff I'm making actually does help with preparation, but still. Uh, also, I did take off my uh, helm here, or the blood helmet, because, um, yeah, the night vision was kind of annoying, because I realized I kept having night vision particles on my screen, and that sounded like a loud car. Your that or bee just, like, flew by my headphones or something. I don't know. But, uh, yeah, so, um... I realized that the particles from the night vision potion probably got a bit annoying, so I took it off because I didn't want to be scurrying the screen or causing drops in frame weight, f frame weight, <laughs> frame rate. So, uh, yeah. But, uh, the only thing I want to note this episode, well, one, I put uh, Fortune on here, but I know that in the other episode, so I don't have to. The other thing is Tinker's tools. You might have been wondering, why are the shurikens here and where's the bow? Well, that's because... I did a lot of grinding off camera. Remember how I uh, mentioned how slow it was to train these tools because uh, they took so long to regenerate? Grandmaster, Grandmaster, that was already Grandmaster. And that was already Grandmaster too. So that has no upgrades. That has upgrades I can't put on anything because nothing else benefits the bow. Uh, that has one upgrade from getting Grandmaster, and that has one upgrade from getting Grandmaster. This also got Moss as its final random modifier, which is really good, because it meant it regenerated faster. If it did not get Moss as its, uh, Master modifier, I do not know if I would have heard this done in time for this episode, because pretty much I just would keep these two uh, on me, and then whenever I was, like, AFK, or not AFK, but, like, whenever I was building the tower or preparing anything else, I'd be sure to, uh, check back when they hit their max limits or close to them. I went to the grinder and just trained them up, so, yeah, they're max level now. And that means I can finally modify them. So, as you see here, um, yeah, I want to make these tools really powerful for the fight, because, uh, it's gonna be a hard fight. So, I want to start with my sword here, and, come on, get in there. So this is the final modifier I can get. I already did the Nether Star. I already did the uh, Gold Block and Diamond. It has its final level. It has all its random modifiers. This is the last modifier my sword will ever have access to. And that also was an achievement of getting a max level tool, by the way. So the same is true here. These bolts, now they can no longer be upgraded. And oh, put that in the wrong spot. So all these are now max level. So, I think I am just going to go all out quartz. I might be forgetting something else I could put on. Like, I could put lifesteal, I suppose. These already have lifesteal from their random modifier. But I could put, like, lifesteal. But, I don't know. I just want damage. So, this is 13.5 hearts. This is 17 hearts. That does a lot of damage. And this is 6 hearts. So, uh, I'm just going to, uh cut and apply all these quartz blocks and use up all their modifiers so that has one modifier and these both have two so uh yeah i'm gonna cut and when i cut back we'll see how strong these tools are okay so these tools are now all maxed out on damage they cannot go any higher before this was i think it was 13.5 damage or something like that now it's 15 it went from 27 attack you know on down here where it says looting I'm trying to point but you can't see my screen so yeah but yeah it used to be 27, now it's 30. So it got an extra 3 damage, or uh, 1.5 hearts. Yeah. So that's really strong now. Uh, compared to this sword, uh, that does 24. So it's an extra 5 damage above that now. Uh, yep, this is where I want to be. Uh, this, I actually messed up. It was, uh, I think, 17 or something. Uh, pretty much here it was like 17, now it's 20.5, but I was actually looking at its uh, max attack, not its attack. I'm not sure what the difference is. One must be close range or something. But, um, yeah, now it's plus 21 attack. So it's actually weaker than this, but at its max attack, it's actually stronger. So those are powerful uh, ranged weapons anyway. And uh, now the bolts. I think this was 6 before, and now they're 8. 
So uh, they have plus 16, and the bow itself gives uh, plus 14. So together, that's plus 30, same as my sword. So um, that's really powerful. And there's a few other things I want to make as well. It's also night. But uh, yeah, in here, I have some books I've been saving. And oh, there we go. Might as well collect the, the chicken egg. Or chicken eggs there while I can. So in here I got some stuff ready. Uh, I want to upgrade the bound axe because remember in the other episode I upgraded the healing axe only to realize it can't deal damage. That was embarrassing but yeah the bound axe however is like the strongest axe in the mod pack. It has plus 11 attack damage which is pretty insane. Let me just search axe real quick for you guys to see. Or space axe. There we go so I don't get pickaxe. So you know a diamond axe is plus 6. That's plus 11. There are, I think, a couple stronger axes, but most don't go past plus 10. You know, Tinker Axes can't get enchantments. Uh, the Corrupted Axe can, but I don't know about the Corrupted stuff or how it works. Uh, the Flux Infused Axe might... I don't know. It doesn't really show attack damage. I think it's actually just plus 5 and plus 1. So... I think there are, like, uh, the Axe Blades. They don't count as axes, I don't think. Uh, the Mentor's Axe is another one I was considering, but... I don't know, apart from uh, the Corrupted Axe here, this is the strongest axe I have access to and already have it, so might as well use it. And the other thing is the Tri-Bow. Um, I tested this out on the test world and it is ridiculously overpowered. I also want to note about the Ice and Ender Bow. Uh, pretty much, I remember when I got them, I was said I was worried about crashes. Well, the Ice Bow, I don't have arrows and I don't really want to even fire them, but... They didn't crash me in the test world anyway. I just don't want to fire them and degrade them, really. But the Ice Bow applies slowness. The Ender Bow switches your place with the target. So if I was to shoot this chicken here, Brad, it didn't die, I'd be in the pen and it would be on the bed. So that's how the Ender Bow and Ice Bow work. They're not very useful. But the Tri Bow here is extremely powerful. It fires three arrows at once. And here's the thing. I tested and with power five... It would deal like 90 damage. Like each arrow could hit 30 or something insane. I remember I, I uh, spawned one in on my test world and gave it power 5 and shot an iron golem. It did insane amounts of damage. If I put explosion on it, it did even more damage. And actually, do I have an explosion book? Hold on, let me look real quick. Uh, power, power, frost. Uh, how about in here? I do. Ah, oh, that's a tough one. I would need to clone it. I've been up uh, cloning some books too and preparing stuff as you can see. I have a Thorns one there. Uh, when I was grinding up the Tinkerous tools, I used the levels to clone books or enchant books. So yeah, but I do want to just apply this because I did have like a Power uh, 3 book with uh, Affinity, I think, or something like that. And I had enough books lying around to upgrade to Power 5. So it's Power 5 and Affinity. And um, yeah, so if I go out here, I can just fire it just to show you. Yep. So, it does have a uh, limited durability, but I can repair it through uh, various tech things, like that Reconstructor. And I really wish I had a monster just to show you how much damage it dealt. Uh, any volunteers? Yeah, they're all running. No Striders or Jengus in sight. Uh, anything in the forest over there? Ideally, I'd need something of a lot... Okay, actually, how about this? I know something I can uh, get to show it. It's not very nice, but I know something I can get. So, uh, yeah, I can just build an iron golem because I have pumpkins. And I have a lot of iron. I can afford to waste some. Or can, not can't. Uh, this seems like a good area. And, oh, you're still active? Uh, pretty much I was testing it just to make sure it worked. And um, apparently it never stopped. Um, that's a bit worrying. And, oh, that was the lighting glitch. It showed uh, that. I turned that on before I started recording because I forgot to put the torches back in the base. But, um, yeah. So, I think the iron golem's like uh, the wither, but with a pumpkin. And the snow golem is without the arms. Or something like that. Uh, eh, come on. There we go. So, it has 100 health. Now, watch one shot. That was a ton of damage. Now, let's see how much my sword does. My sword doesn't even deal that much damage. My sword dealt 30. That took it from 100 to 39. So that was 66 damage. 
Ooh, for a tribo, that's not a very good number. But, uh... Sorry, Golem. But, uh, yeah, I need to do something about that. Um... I just don't know what to throw in the binding ritual. Uh, but yeah, uh, I really should turn that off, though. Hold on, let me, uh, deal with that real quick. Okay, so I did, uh, turn off the binding ritual. I had a diamond pickaxe of unbreaking three in my enemy system, so I just threw it there, and, uh, it did the whole binding ritual like I've done a few times on camera now. And, unfortunately, I didn't grab the pickaxe. It, like, fell out of the circle as it was shrinking and just got deleted. I think that is what it is. If it falls out of the circle and I don't catch it, it goes away. But, so yeah, I lost that pickaxe. It probably had some significance. I pretty much just went up here and searched durability to see all tools, and it was the diamond pickaxe of Unbreaking 3. Kind of miss it. Kind of wish I could keep it and keep it in as a bound tool, but, but wasn't meant to be. But, uh, yeah, as you see, can see, though, I did put the enchantments on here. I was going to do a little clip and say, okay, now I'm going to put the enchantments on, but wasn't really a lot of point in that, because I've done this before, and you saw the books already, but now it has Wrath, Sharpness, Cleave, and Execution, dealing 30... Or 32.5 attack damage, which is... I don't want to do the math for how many hearts it is. It's a lot, okay? So, uh, yeah, it's not as strong as this, but the reason I want to make an axe is cleave. Cleave gives it an AoE attack. So, yeah, it also gets execution, which means the lower the, or lower the health the foe is, the more damage it deals. So, it could be really good for killing stuff. Actually, can I get looting? Uh... Uh, fortune, uh, doesn't seem so dark. If it got looting, it'd be really good for farming mobs. Because, uh, well, I have mentioned before, I need the, uh, end shards, or ender shards, as well as nether shards, to make the really good, uh, thongcraft armor. But, uh, for that, I need to farm a lot of endermen. So, if I could, uh, have an AoE attack and just run around the end and kill them all, that would help a lot. Also, uh, I had to make a new anvil because my old one broke while I was upgrading this. And I used the ingots from the iron golem. The iron golem dropped four ingots. I had the iron bars, or iron blocks, from when I summoned the golem. So, the iron golem is gonna live on as my new anvil. Probably not the best existence, I have to admit, but I needed an anvil, so, yeah. And, um... Okay, so that's a lot of the uh, stuff I want to prepare. I got a really powerful bow and the bound axe. Now, um, I have a bit of a confession to make. Uh, remember how I spent a lot of this episode upgrading my uh, my crossbow and my shurikens and making this powerful bow? Um, ranged weapons don't work on the Ender Dragon. <laughs> I gave it whirlwind so it deflects all projectiles. So, um, yeah, that 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 is all useless. However, there is a trick. And that's why it's kind of hemming and hauling over explosive. Explosions do still hit the Ender Dragon, but they deal very little damage. But three explosions might actually deal a good bit of damage. I don't know, because if you do have a uh, explosion on a Tribo, it does hit with all three arrows and explode. I did on the test run, and it was ridiculous. Like, one shot an Iron Golem then. So, uh, yeah. So, I don't know, I might apply that book off camera, I might not. And this is just my... Uh, satchel of things, pretty much. So, uh, yeah. I uh, know, I could have just kept that a secret and you would have found out next episode, but thought I'd just mention that now, so don't expect to see some epic bow fights. Pretty much, I just felt that the problem with bows in the Ender Dragon is you just shoot it when it gets close and it never hits you. And that kind of removed all risk of damage in the fight, so it just was a matter of shooting it. So, by giving it Whirlwind, you can actually shoot it as it approaches you to deter it, but you deal no damage. Unless you have explosions. So if you really want to be that guy, you could get an explosive tribo. And every time it got close, you shoot it. And that would eventually kill it. But not really what I was going for. Also, I'm not sure how well explosive acts with a whirlwind. Like, it could shoot one of the arrows back at you, for all I know. So, yeah. Although, if I had whirlwind and it had a whirlwind, that's going to be very confusing. Anyway, the other thing I want to make is something called... Uh, Infernal, uh, there it is, Infernal Claws. So, the other day when I was doing stuff in the Nether, I realized I don't have fire protection. And this absorbs fire damage at the expense of hunger. So the thing is, you know, I had the Wither's Rose to make me immune to Wither. I have nothing to make me immune to fire, so I want to make this. I did farm out of the Molten Cores I needed. So I should be able to make all five of these and make the tool. Let me just, just search. Pretty much I took the uh, blaze spawner down to the mines, which got a bit broken because I had to kill a few withers for stuff too. But yeah, we'll get to that eventually. So yeah, infernal claws. Not Santa Claus. So if I am set on fire, it will absorb fire damage at the expense of hunger. At least that's what it says. Um, 
I don't really have handy lava. Or, actually, I do. Okay, so if I take this bucket of lava... Huh. So the fire's not hurting me. Lava hurts me. But fire does not. Doesn't seem like my hunger's even draining that fast. So, I, when I'm holding it, it's technically not in my inventory, so it hurts me. Put it there, though, and it doesn't hurt me. So, that is actually really nice. So, if I just keep that, or if I just keep that item on me... Oh, God, I didn't think. It's a wooden floor. So, if I just uh, keep this item on me, like the Willis Rose, I won't take fire damage. It will drain my hunger a bit, but I think that's a fair trade-off. So, uh, yeah. And the last thing I want to do is actually in the tower... And uh, I'm not sure how much time I'm gonna have for it, but I want to sleep too. It's actually Botania stuff, and I really need to do this this episode, cause it's like required for the Ender Dragon. So, uh, yeah. Er, the problem with the Ender Dragon is partially an endurance fight now, and I did set up some uh, Botania stuff here just because uh, I need to some mana. I need to do some potion stuff, or er, some. Well, I kind of gave it away, but it's potion stuff. But uh. Yeah, it has about a half a mana pool full. I hope that's good enough. Um, so the first thing I need to make is some uh, mana glass. So one, two, three. And uh, I will make more of this off camera as needed, but that's how you make uh, mana glass vials. And a lot of this other stuff is related to the whole brewing process. Um, there's pretty much a recipe for making uh, a botanical brewery, I think it's called. But it does need mana's power. Uh, tentacle? There we go. So that's how you make it. It looks really cool. I have to give it that. So if I put it here. So it doesn't have any UI like the rest of Botania. Or it doesn't have an interface. But if I click or click the mana. Sp click the mana spreader. Click, click that. Okay, now sending mana to that from the mana pool. There we go. So now I can put the vials there and the other ingredients and it will make potions. I don't think they need to be full of water. Is that a thing? Hold on, let me see. Our recipes. Okay, so this is how it works. So you get the ingredients and just put it on here and it makes potions. So it can make speed, but okay, so the main thing is these are like potions. They're not like normal vanilla potions though. They only make like the highest tiers, so there isn't a ton of different potions. There's only, well, 11 pages worth, but they are four dose potions. Now the reason this is so important is because, like I said, the Ender Dragon's a bit of an endurance fight. So um, it's going to be a bit taxing on my supplies. Now technically I can bring unlimited supplies because... uh. I could fill this with like golden bags and stuff full of different potions so I could just like pull out a full bag full of strength potions. But just for the sake of inventory management it's a lot easier if you know I can drink a potion multiple times and that's what this allows me to do. So the main one I want to make is, I think that's actually the recipe for it, uh, is strength. Because their potion of vigor, as it's called, is, there we go. Oh wait, I think there was a new little animation too, wasn't there? Uh, yeah, it has a little uh, hourglass thing on this. I forget when that was added, but it wasn't always the thing. So, ta-da. We got a, a vial of vigor for strength 2 for a minute and 30 seconds. I think that's the normal time, but 4 doses. And uh, how much mana did that take? Ooh, that actually took a decent chunk, but I had to set the thermal lilies. They did kind of nerf uh, thermal lilies, though, because I can't just use my old ritual anymore. So, I have to look into new uh, Batania power when I finally set that all back up. But what I've been doing is just this and counting to eight because the thing is now if you put lava down while they're on cooldown it extends the cooldown or something like that so you can't just uh put it next to like an infinite lava source and it just power everything uh i think that's actually it sorry i wasn't counting because i was talking but yeah let's look at the potions real quick and i think i'm just gonna end it here and make more potions off camera but there's a uh, speed uh vigor or fleet foot vigor uh, adrenaline, which is haste, which is cool because you can't get a vanilla. Mending, which is another one I want because I will need healing potions. And I do have the stuff in the chest there. Uh, regeneration, or, uh, revitalization, uh, upsurging, jump boost. Uh, regeneration or restoration, that is a uh, longer regeneration. 
And uh, Fortitude for Resistance. That might... I'm not sure Fortitude actually would help for the Ender Dragon fight. I don't know. Uh, uh, fire Resistance or, or Magma Skin, Gills, which is Water Breathing. Uh, cloaking for Invisibility. Owl Sight for Night Vision. Uh, absorption or Shielding is Absorption. Overload, RuneScape reference, is a very high strength, strength 4, the highest you can get, and speed, but it gives you weakness and hunger. Now, the problem with that is I think weakness kind of counteracts the strength, and I don't know how to remove that. I think there might actually be another potion for that. I don't know what Silk Cross does. Uh, Featherfoot, I don't know that one either. I think that might reduce fall damage. Emptiness, also don't know what that does. Maybe that removes negative effects. Bloodthirst, uh, a lure. Absolution. Maybe that removes the negative effects. And uh, Ward Warp. That's a Thaumcraft one to uh, hold off uh, Warp. Or Warp Ward. Sorry, I got that backwards. So I think I do want to make the other two potion types real quick with the other ones I had prepared. Uh, I think it was like that. And hold on. Let me just uh, rearrange my hot bar a bit. So I think it was that, 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 and that. And that's how I make a healing potion, and then the final one was, uh, the regeneration one, which was, like, uh... Okay, so it's redstone or glowstone. Apparently I meant to go for the glowstone one, because I don't have redstone. Okay, I didn't even watch that, and... So yeah, I like that, uh, new, uh, Batania little AI so you can see the progress. I forget when that was, but... Oh, actually, it was gaining mana thanks to the Thermalize, so, I don't know, off-camera, I'll have to make a lot more of these potions, but, uh, yeah. And that's the final one I want to make for now, anyway. Or, I don't know, I just need to make a bunch more mana glass and make a lot more of these. I might also make the Resistance one, because that might be useful, but I mainly want to focus on healing and a few strength, not a whole bunch. But I do need a lot of strength potions, and you'll see why in the next episode, but yeah. So I do want to end it there, so uh, yeah, I think I'm pretty prepared for the Ender Dragon. I don't think there's a lot more I really need, and okay, I kind of want my night vision back now, because the dark spots are annoying me. So, uh, there we go. The problem is now I have these blue particles. Actually, um, is it decreased? Nope. Uh, video settings? Minimal. There we go. I just turned off particles for the moment. And, oh, you can still see the burnout with the particles off, it seems. So that's good. So, I don't know. I might uh, keep particles. I don't know. It's just one of those things that I might miss things. And let's see. How many cobblestone? Yeah, that's just a ton of cobblestone. It's like halfway full of barrel, or I don't think it's even halfway yet. But, anyway. So, uh, let me actually just uh, throw this stuff back real quick. Uh, can be a bit sloppy. Uh, that actually goes in there, too. Okay, so, uh, I'll just put these potions here. So, uh, yeah. Anyway, hopefully you enjoyed this episode and, uh, upgrading all my stuff for the Ender Dragon fight. Sorry that, uh, the ranged weapons actually won't be used in the fight, but, I don't know, I just wanted to make them because they're really cool ranged weapons and, you know, having, uh, my bow, or my boats now max damage, my shurikens max damage, and the really powerful tri-bow, and the bound axe might actually be useful. Same for the bound sword because of execution, so when the Ender Dragon's lower on health, this will probably deal more damage, uh, than this sword because of execution. So, uh, yeah. Hopefully I remember that when I got to record next episode. And I forgot I had that wand on me. Uh, I'll put it back after in the episode. So, uh, yeah. Anyway, uh, yeah, like I said a few times now, hopefully you enjoyed my Ender Dragon preparation and are excited to see the fight next episode after I update the mod pack. And, uh, yeah, so, um, I probably should go, uh, start editing these episodes and update that mod pack. So, anyway, thank you all for watching. Until next time, goodbye.